White House spokesman finally commented on a report about Lake and Riley, her death late uh, Monday afternoon. They they spoke about it. They just said the murderer should be held accountable. Uh, we'd like to extend our deepest consult- condolences to the family and loved ones of Lake and Hope Riley. People should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law if they're found to be guilty. Given this is an active case, I love this. They'll comment on anything unless it hurts them. Then it's like, you know, you got to talk to the Justice Department. I, I mean, we can't comment at this point. What about Hunter Biden and his crack cocaine and hooker thing? Uh, you're going to have to talk to the Justice Department. What about uh, what about uh, Donald Trump and his documents? That guy's a big fat liar and he's, uh, he's spying on America with Russia. Well, shouldn't we discuss that? No, we've got that. You don't need to go to the Justice Department. We got that one handled. So anyway, finally they said something, but the reaction from the press has been grotesque. CNN reported yesterday, in case you don't know, um, Lakin Riley, she was jogging. She was a university student in Georgia. She's jogging in the morning, and she's brutally killed. Um, and what a surprise, it was an illegal alien, and this time from Venezuela. So CNN reports yesterday, quote, there's little evidence leaking in illegal immigration and crime after the Venezuelan migrant was charged in connection with murder of the 22-year-old Georgia nursing student. Uh, found dead Thursday, University of Georgia campus, signs of blunt force trauma after setting out for a jog in the morning. The suspect is 26-year-old Jose Antonio Ibarra. He had crossed into the U.S. illegally near El Paso in September 2022. The uh, the Border Patrol uh, caught him at the border and then just gave him a ticket and released him into the United States. So he had been stopped, but then he goes up to New York. And he got in trouble in New York. He was arrested last year in New York by the NYPD and charged with acting in a manner to injure a child less than 17 and a motor vehicle license violation. They didn't do anything uh, up in New York. They just they just let him go. Uh, And now uh, and now this. So. Now, a new poll shows that many Americans think that there is a influx of illegal immigrants, and that is causing an increase to crime. And let me just say, that's not true. It's not true. Well, it's not entirely true. It is the administration's uh, new regulations and guidelines that are letting all of these people in, We're having all of these problems because of the new guidelines. And then on top of that, we also have new guidelines issued by all of these district attorneys all over the country that were hired by none other than uh, George Soros. Good. So we got that going for us. That's what's causing crime. We're not enforcing our laws at the border. And then we're not enforcing our laws in our cities. Our government isn't enforcing the law. Our DAs aren't enforcing the law. And that's why you have criminals going crazy because they know I don't, I'm not going to be charged with it. I'm going to be let go. It's not a problem. So yesterday, Biden uh, was taken on by Donald Trump. He uh, said, this is, this is the problem with the Biden administration and our border. And everybody went crazy. By the way, he was charged with malice murder, felony murder, aggravated battery, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, kidnapping, and hindering a 911 call and concealing the death of another. I don't know. Um, That seems pretty serious. So they uh, are not letting him go this time. The reason why they let him go last time in New York City is because 
New York City is a sanctuary city. Hmm. By the way, his brother also charged on Friday uh, for possessing a fraudulent green card being held in state custody now. Uh, the federal arrest affidavit for Diego, the brother who killed the girl, uh, says that in September 23, athens Clark County police charged him with drunken driving and driving without a license. Oh, so he just did it in New York and then came down to Georgia. Uh, oh, and he was also later arrested for shoplifting and then skipping out on anything having to do with showing up for court. A majority of Americans now say that uh, a border wall has to be done. This is the first time since the history of polls that a majority of Americans say, border wall, please. Trump says, I'm going to have a massive deportation. He said, it's going to be the largest deportation if I'm elected. Massive deportation uh, it'll be the biggest in uh, in history. Okay, well, how do people feel about that? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you how the Washington Post feels about it. After hundreds of thousands of Mexican migrants were put on buses, planes, and boats during the scorching summer of 1954 and sent across the U.S. border into often unfamiliar parts of Mexico... The head of the Immigration and Naturalization Service declared the border secured. It was the so-called wetback problem. But the military-style campaign, which used the same slur in its name, Operation Wetback, tore families apart, forcibly uprooted people in the name of securing the border, experts say. And sometimes those efforts turn deadly. Now, first of all, can I just ask why it was a smear in 1950 to uh, call this Operation Wetback? That, that's before it became a slur. Operation Wetback was called that because the people that were being deported were the people that crossed the Rio Grande and swam across or came across, and they were wet when they got out. Now it's, but, now it's a slur, but it wasn't in the 1950s. Now, former President Donald Trump is using the Eisenhower era operation as a blueprint for his vision. It will be the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. It will remove 10.5 million undocumented people in the United States, of whom two-thirds have lived in this country for more than a decade. Now, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Why is it that we're going after the ones who have lived here for a decade, 10.5 million. I think we should probably start with the ones that are here that just came here and uh, have no reason to be here and uh, are causing real problems. You can go with the, the last 10 million that have come in and they aren't the ones who have lived here for more than a decade. Got to get them because if you don't get them now, What's going to happen? The press will say they've been here for more than a decade. Americans can expect, this is Donald Trump, Americans can expect that immediately upon President Trump's return to the Oval Office, he will restore all of his prior policies, implement brand new crackdowns that will send shockwaves to all the world's criminal smugglers and marshal every federal and state power necessary to institute the deportation operation. It's a spokesperson from him yesterday. Undocumented illegal immigrants should not get comfortable because very soon they'll be going home. Now, that's what the Trump people said yesterday. The Post is saying that's horrible. You watch the number of people coming across the border. The more this is publicized, what he's saying the number of illegals coming across our border will go down. Why? Because what the president says matters. When Joe Biden said, no, I'm not encouraging people, I'm not at all. Yes, he was. Is Donald Trump discouraging people? Yes, he is. Is that a good thing? Yes, it is. But when describing the operation on what Trump's plan is built, says the Washington Post, 
experts commonly land on the same word. What's that word, Stu? What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Experts. All the experts are saying the same word. Hmm, gosh. There's so many that pop to mind, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. What is inhumane. it? Inhumane. Inhumane. It's inhumane. Oh, gosh. It's inhumane. Yeah, just inhumane. I'm wondering if they're talking to any experts that uh, agree with, you know, border policies that secure the border, I wonder. When Trump harkens back to that, I think we've got to be really clear about what kind of a law enforcement campaign he is threatening to unleash, says uh, Little Hernandez, who holds the uh, Thomas E. Lifka Endowed Chair, History of UCLA. It's not just mass deportation. It's mass racial banishment. No, no. Um, If you're coming in from Russia, I want you out. If you're, I mean, if you're doing it illegally, if you're coming in from China, I want you out. Uh, you're coming in from Sweden, I want you out. England, I want you out. If you're coming from Iran, I really want you out. You're coming from uh, hostile countries, bye bye. If you're coming here just because you're a family trying to better themselves, go through the front door. And you know what? Bring your family instead of just sending your. 20-year-old son. I I just think, you know, we got enough of angry 20-year-olds on our own. We don't need any more. If you'd like one, if you'd like to take an angry teenager, I will gladly invite you to house one of my children. You'd house them, see what happens with that one. If that's what you're really looking for, I can help you in that department. 